G'day friends, welcome to this very simple flip through of uh, a journal I started to work on a new Inktober prompts list. I know, I've got Whimsy Ween going, that's for Halloween content. <laughs> I've got Daisy going, that's for Inktober and the uh, daily Inktober videos that I've got on my channel. And uh, in my off time, which is ridiculous, but I do have some now. <laughs> in my spare time that I, no, to be honest, I don't have much spare time, but I do set aside time to work for myself just to kind of grease the wheels a little bit and just make sure that I'm feeling very creatively fulfilled so that I can uh, pass that on to you. You know, the cup has to be overflowing for uh, everyone to be happy. So I do set aside time for me to play uh, for myself and learn my own things. Oh, there's cat hair everywhere classic. Um, so this is something I put together for the hashtag Little Raven Inktober prompts list and uh, that's by Courtney Diaz. I'm one of her patrons and I don't know if this prompts list is anywhere publicly um, so you might want to ask Courtney if that's something that's just for Patreon or if it's uh, a public prompts list as well. I'm not quite sure honestly I didn't even ask. So uh, I'm just going to flip through this today. Um, it's It'll be day three when I upload this so... This is super random, but I'm gonna flip the first seven days of the prompts list. I took a much more simple approach to this than I did my other projects because this is my um, this is like off camera time. This is time that I just get to play. So I just wanted to be really simple about it. I wanted to use Copic markers because I never break them out, and I've got so. I mean, I shouldn't say that I do, but I wanted to ju just use Copic markers and just illustrate in the way that I used to remember doing that. Um, you know, when I was younger. So much of what I do now is about mixed media and playing with absolutely anything I can get my hands on, but now I just wanted to like strip it all back, just illustrate a little bit and use the prompts list to um, get outside of my own head. I love the Whimsy Ween prompts list and I love putting the content together for that. And uh, I guess this will go up as a part of, um, you know, Halloween content, but it's not from the Whimsy Ween list per se. Um, but I, it, you know, that's all stuff that's in my head. Those are ideas that I've had when I put the prompts list together. Um, they're ideas I've had since. So maybe I've been working on them for about a month now, or like I've had an idea for about a month. And honestly, sometimes it can get a little stale or sometimes there can be a lot of like unexpected expectation on some of those things that uh, makes you not want to approach it with that kind of sense of ease that you want to sit down and do something with. So having someone else's prompts list to work off of uh, is just a lot easier for me to get out of my own head. I mean, there's a lot. There's so many prompts lists around, but the thing with just the one word type prompts list is it kind of, it leaves it too open. I mean, I like things open for interpretation, but I don't want to be so open. I don't even know where to start. Um, I've seen some, I don't know what prompts list it is, but I saw Furry Little Peach did a, a prompt and it was Pebble. Like, I wouldn't even know what to do with that. <laughs> like, I don't draw pebbles. I don't know what I would supposed to, what am I supposed to do with a pebble? Like, I'm supposed to draw something with a pebble pattern. I have no idea. So for me, when I saw Courtney had uh, approached the prompts list the same way I had done for Daisy, the Daisy project, as far as like prompt passages, more like little prompt stories, I thought that was a lot easier for me to grasp and to flesh out in my imagination. So that's what I'm going to flip through today. I have seven, I've actually done more than seven, but I'm only going to flip you through a week and we'll see if I come back and flip through this one again. <laughs> Just let me know below if you enjoyed it. This is day one and the prompt for this was, she was so glad he was there, her very own monster under the bed. Um, so you can see she's just sitting on the bed and she's got a little monster under there. I have been experimenting with a very simplistic style of illustration for a couple of months now, maybe even a few months, maybe even multiple months. But um, I've just been for this tackling it with, uh, first of all, going in with this polychromos pencil, but you could just use any pencil. But the one I've just specifically um, designated for this was the Rose Carmine. And uh, it's just a beautiful soft pink. I use that pencil and kind of lightly sketch out what I want to do. If you look closely, you can still see lots of the little sketch marks around there. I then fill it in with Copic markers and I'm only using my Copic sketch markers. I do have the chows, which are this rec uh, this is a rectangular barrel, but this is a circular barrel. These are a lot cheaper. They hold less ink, um, but I believe both are refillable. So I think maybe it just comes down to ergonomics. This holds just a lot more ink and, uh, and you know, obviously a bit more expensive, but I've been buying these open stock as these ones run out because um, 
full transparency, I've had these since I was 16 years old. <laughs> so uh, she's running low. But uh, I've been using these, the Copic markers, to kind of fill them in. Really not trying to go beyond three or four colors when I put it together. I might use a few different shades of the color um, just to get a bit of depth in there or maybe pull a contrasting color out just to, to make something pop. But I really want to keep to like three or four different colors with these illustrations. And then I go over the top and pull out some details with this Muji 0.25 gel ink pen. I'm going to link these products down below. Honestly, you don't have to go and check out anything if you don't want, but just in case you're curious to know where you could get them. Um, alcohol markers are really, really great. They go on super smooth and have a very flat lay of color. Uh, the problem with this paper is it's kind of thicker sketch paper. It's not super thick. I don't even know which brand this, this little journal is. I'm sorry, but um, it's actually not that great for Copic markers. You might want to use the render no show through sketchbook if you just want a really nice Copic and be able to draw on both sides of the page. I have a review of that. I'll put a little descriptor card up in the top corner, um, but that won't bleed through. And I believe all of these things would look great on that. I've also used a, I'll get this out. I've used the Traveler's Notebook lightweight paper refill with the Copic markers as well. And I just don't think they're much better on this. I mean, it's flat and it's obviously going to bleed through. You're kind of at the mercy of every single paper unless you get the render no show through sketchbook, but I don't really much mind in here. I just am more irritated that I can see a lot of the, um, the separation in the color. I, it's just not a super flat look and I would like it to be really flat. But since I designated this for that, I thought, you know what, just run with it. It's a cute little texture, even though you didn't plan on it, um, you'll be fine, you'll live. So that's what I've been doing. I really like this one. I think it was a really strong start and that's what made me keep going. And then I, you know, I feel like this is gonna be a roller coaster ride just like this, <laughs> but I haven't torn anything out. I haven't started again with anything. I just wanna draw one and done, much like I'm trying to do in my voiceovers for Inktober. I just wanna be one and done with this kind of stuff um, and you know, share more of the mistakes and more of the process rather than the finished pieces. So I was super happy with this. I, th I think she looks sorry, Kyorish. This is the second day. It was at that point they realized the inkies were coming. Now, I'm not quite sure what I was supposed to visualize with that, uh, but in my mind, they were the inkies were a gang of fountain pens and they were, um, I mean, they mean business and they're just ready. So uh, they're all linked arm in arm and they're ready to attack. Some pink fountain pens with some cute little details in here. This was super simple. Like I said, I'm, I'm really trying to to tone it all down and bring myself to a, a much simpler place. You can tell that I still, you know, I wasted all that time drawing all these little stripes in there. <laughs> I like the feature, but you know, honestly, I probably could have gotten away with not doing that. And uh, I'm, I'm still in process of seeing what I can leave out and what I should put in. So, um, you know what? I think I'm gonna flip all the book. I'll do more than seven. I'll do as many as I've got in here right now. This is day three. It says, Terence, did you find my going out head? So you can see she's all dressed up lovely to go out and she's just putting her home head back in its little glass case. <laughs> this gives me very uh, the Jetsons vibes. It's almost a little mid-century in its look. I don't know how that happened because I didn't mean for it to happen. But things I'm obsessed with are her little uh, fishnet scale, like fish scale net stockings. I don't know how to work that in to be cute about it, but you know what I mean? Like fishnet stockings, but fish scale net stockings. Either way, um, I like the color palette, but I really love her feather boa. Like it's just so ultra. I thought it would be even more difficult to figure out that she didn't have a head because the feather boa is kind of covering a lot of it. And now I think it just really makes you realize she is just fully missing a head. So <laughs> uh, I thought that was a cute little prompt. Day four, we have, she was built like a house, but she loved her squishy. Now, I'm not really sure what that was in reference to, but like, I think it's all open for interpretation. So to me, she's squishing whatever this is. It made me think of uh, Finding Nemo. I think one of them has a squishy or something, uh, but built like a house made me think of Kath and Kim. <laughs> when she goes, what's your health if you have the size of a house and the pain in the proverbial, I, um, that, that's what made me think of that. But I wasn't gonna draw Kath and Kim. So I just drew like a little house with some eyes and some hands and legs, just some limbs on a house. I hate the color scheme of this. I think it was really terrible actually. Uh, I, I even tried to go over this with a different color because that was a worse color than that. But this was supposed to be a um, almost like a berry purple. I don't actually have the color with me but it was almost this color. 
So when it went down onto the paper, it just went a lot darker and a lot muddier. And I think it's probably a good shadow color, but I hate the way that it looks as a, a blocked in color. The next one we've got is all the cupboard ever wanted was a monster of its own. This is the monster in the cupboard. The cupboard got what it wanted. I wanted the cupboard itself to be almost a little monster-esque. So it, it wasn't just like a random cupboard. Also, I now I'm thinking, did I draw a closet or is it cupboard? What's a cupboard and a closet? How are they different? I don't know. I feel like Steve's told me this before. Because I, I say everything in the kitchen's a cupboard. The kitchen cupboard. Yeah, no, I never, never said closet. Maybe it's a kitchen thing. Oh, I say... I call our closet a cupboard as well. Maybe I'm confused. Okay. Well, just pretend that is a cupboard for wherever this cupboard comes from. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it got its own little monster. I tried to pull reference from one of the collaborative postcards that Steve and I did together for back in uh, Patreon days in the Happy Mailer box. So it's this, um, it almost looks like a little teddy bear head and he's got these really long uh, arms with a vine motif. And I just, I love how little and like compact the little illustrations are in the middle of the page. I think that's what I loved about this first one too. It was just this nice little illustration here. I could put the prompt down here if I wanted to, but I didn't trust my handwriting. Um, but see, this is getting a little big for me. And even this I wish was a little smaller. I kind of want them to be centered in the middle of the page. Oh, this light. I just noticed this light is going in and out. I'm super sorry about that. The, uh, the contrast is gonna be random for this video. Here we've got prompt number six. Slowly, Martha realized that her bowl of soup was looking back at her. And I didn't intend for this to happen, but it almost looks a little like a watermelon slash fish slash... It almost doesn't look like a bowl of soup. It looks like something's been cut in half, which just seems yuck and really graphic to me. But I just kind of wanted to have this like bowl. And I think this was supposed to be the, the base of the bowl, but it almost looks like a little fish tail. And the pattern just kind of made this look like... You know what I mean? Like a cross section of, you know, a cut of ham or something. This looks like ham. <laughs> so slowly Martha realized that her ham was looking back at her. But I really like this little, um, this little look of Martha here. This is very, um, it took me a long time to figure out where I was inspired to start doing these um, very like simplistic illustration styles from. And then I saw uh, in my YouTube recommended videos, someone that I was watching ages ago that I kind of just stopped watching after a while. No particular reason. I just, you know, YouTube recommends them and then they come and then they go. So <laughs> um, it was uh, Fran Mes Mesnesnes. I don't know her last name. Um, Fran Nerd, I think is a lot of what people uh, know her has, know her has, know her as. And uh, her simplistic illustration style is very much this like loopy little, um, little pen thing as well. Also catnip illustrations is one that has a, a similar, very simplistic style. And even Furry Little Peach, uh, she has that very pared down, very, bold little cute kind of aesthetic. So all of these places I think is where I've kind of been encouraged to uh, strip it all back and pare it all down. I'm not saying that this is what I'm going to illustrate like and this is, you know, screw all of the fashion illustration, like we're never doing whimsical girls again. <laughs> uh, but you know what I'm like, I like to try everything. I just, I really turn up and turn out for the buffet of, uh, of art styles. So I'm going to play with all of them. And for this, I think it really helps because I've only got a small amount of time that I can set aside for myself at night to, you know, to indulge myself and play and just kind of grow and learn. And when I'm doing that, I don't want to embark on massive projects, you know, such a like grand scale and magnitude. I just want to, I want really simple things that I can try and do. And this has been something that's just felt very therapeutic to me, just very simple illustrations. I really slow down to do them and I'm very careful about where I place the line. A lot of the illustration style involves this very broken line technique so that you can have this lineless coloring look, but there's still some depth definition there and I think doing it with the colored liner is kind of the uh, the tip there because um, blue I think is something that Fran Nerd uses I believe she does a lot of her lining with blue uh, which speaks to me because I love my Mitsubishi red blue pencil and uh, and I've I mean I've got millions of these but I will use this Prussian blue whenever I want to darken up an illustration and, and keep one of those lines so it's really funny to see how all the references come together and it totally makes sense as to why I would pull from these places because subconsciously it's what I've been like enjoying for a long time now or maybe back in the day and I don't know so this one here might oh no there's one more after this I think uh this is 
I was going to flip to this, but I do have one more. Uh, you would think two heads would mean twice the bright ideas. You'd be wrong. To me, that was just screaming Tweedledee and Tweedledum, but I didn't want to go too obvious with it. But then I did, because I really love the little hats with the ribbons. I just kind of extended them out and did this um, banner kind of a thing, which made me want a letter in there. I was going to put a funny little quote, but I didn't trust myself, so I kind of left it. That's for me to try and procreate or photocopy this and try it on that. <laughs> um, but I really love these illustrations. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I think it's just going to be fun to have a, a cute little book to look through. And the last one I'm going to show you today is And Out From Behind My Teacup Stepped. Uh, so I just drew this random little bandit looking character just hiding behind this cracked teapot. This one was difficult. This one, there was a lot going on and I, I, I got a sense of me trying to put too much back into the illustrations. because They start out very, very simple. This one, I'm really happy with how simple it is. Um, it's, it's tricky to find the balance. You, if you get to that stage where you don't think there's enough there and then you put a little bit more and then you feel like you're in this weird middle ground or you put it in the wrong place, you start adding and adding and adding, if you're me anyway, you start adding <laughs> until you end up with something like this and uh, and it's just not as simple as it needed to look. So um, I'm not going to retry that. I think it, you know, it was what it was. It served its purpose. I, I did the prompt and I had fun doing it, but you know, I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is even after doing uh, just over a week's worth of these prompts, I'm still trying to learn what to keep and what not to keep, like where to put a line and where to leave a line out, how much can I get away with and what's the sweet spot right in the middle, which, you know, I think essentially we're all probably learning always until we die. So on that note, <laughs> uh, either, no, either way, I'm having so much fun just playing with this one off camera. I have my off camera journal as well, but I didn't want to, um, it's, it's not like it's full or anything, but I didn't want to fill it with lots of Copic marker illustrations. Cause then I've got lots of like back pages that I have to kind of cover. And, uh, and I just leave that for more of my mixed media fun playtime. And I just had this little journal sitting around like Let's not lie, I have tons of journals sitting around that haven't been used yet. I thought it would, might be fun just to designate one to something specific. I know I'm not the type of person to really truly commit to that, so it might just be as many Inktober prompts as I want to and then turn it into something completely different. Uh, but I'm, I'm super open to it and for now I like that, you know, when I want to sit down and commit to doing another one of these prompts, I'll just grab my little book out, grab my Copic markers, my little pencil, my pen, and just kind of go for it. It's such a, a neat little setup and I'm really enjoying it. I hope you enjoyed it too. Let me know if this is something you'd like me to flip again as I get more of the way through it. Again, I want to mention, I do not know if this is a public prompts list, so um, please don't bite my head off if it's not. <laughs> uh, but you could always reach out to Courtney at Little Raven Inc on Instagram, and uh, I'm sure she'd be happy to help you figure out how to get access to that prompts list. And um, yeah, that's all I'll leave you with. I really enjoy it. In fact, I might sit down and do some more now. Who knows? Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.